Welcome back. We are now on to uh, developing methods for uh, hyperbolic PDEs um, in uh, three dimensions in vector unknowns. And specifically, the, uh, the, the example problem we're working with, the canonical problem we're working with, is that of linear elastodynamics in 3D. What we've accomplished for this problem is a statement of the strong form and of the weak form. We'll pick up from there and write out the finite dimensional weak form and plunge directly into the matrix vector equations now. So uh, we are doing, uh, like I said, um, the problem of hyperbolic PDEs um, in vector unknowns. Uh, and in three dimensions. Okay, of course, this is these are all linear, right? So we're doing linear hyperbolic PDEs and so on. Okay, and also the canonical problem we're talking of here is linear elastodynamics. in 3D. Okay, I'll directly write out the weak form, but the finite dimensional weak form, which you know really requires very little uh, extra specification over the infinite dimensional weak form. Also, I will um, spare us the detailed writing out of the data here, right? We are very familiar with all of that now. All right. So the task we have here is to find u i sup h, and remember the h now indicates that we're talking of uh, a finite dimensional problem. Find u i sup h uh, belongs to the space s h, which is a subset of the larger space s. And, in sp and particularly, we are thinking of s h as consisting of all functions u i sup h, and we expect these to belong to h1 over the domain, such that u i h uh, equals u i given on the corresponding Dirichlet boundary Right? The, the part of the Dirichlet boundary that corresponds to that particular spatial dimension denoted by I. All right? We have this uh, such that for all W H I belonging to V H, which is a subset of V, where V H consists of weighting functions w i sup h, also h1, such that w i sup h vanishes on that corresponding Dirichlet boundary. Okay, so find u i sup h such that for all w i sup h belonging to v h, the following condition holds, right? The usual integral equation, except now that we have the um, one extra term, right? The term that's second order in time. Okay, so we have integral over omega w i sup h rho second time derivative of u with integrated over the volume plus integral over omega w h i comma j sigma h i j d b equals 
integral over omega w h sub i sorry sub i f i d v plus sum over the spatial dimensions 1 to 3 in this case or NSD in general uh, integral over the corresponding Neumann boundary W H I T bar I D S okay that is our finite dimensional weak form right and I didn't state that anywhere so let me just do this right so this is our finite dimensional weak form okay all right now we know how things play out from here everything works out just as before right we're going to use the same basis functions we're doing 3d so you can think of um, trilinear hexahedra as being the simplest of those uh, elements into which we decompose the domain everything works out just the same okay uh, also note that uh, each of these terms is going to give us our our standard sort of uh, contribution that we know so well right uh, when we account for the fact that sigma h satisfies the constitutive relation right which makes it truly linearized elasticity right what we get from this term is a very standard one that we've worked with uh, uh, at least uh, once in great detail right so you recall that this term gives rise to C transpose KD, right? And these two terms here give us C transpose F, okay? Also, now, when you recognize that um, the second time derivative, and it's the second time derivative, so I need a dt squared there. Right. When you recognize that this term on the left-hand side uh, essentially involves the weighting function w multiplying the second time derivative of the trial solution, right, and you work through things just as we work things out in the case of uh, the parabolic problem in 3D. What you will see is that this gives rise to what sort of matrix? We have C transpose coming from W, and we're going to have a D coming from the U, right? In particular, we get a D, dot, D double dot because we have two time derivatives on U. What is the matrix that goes between them? It's one we've encountered. It's the mass matrix. Okay, so essentially this is the form that um, the matrix vector equations take in the case of linear elastodynamics. There's just one detail I want to point out here, which is something to do with the construction of M because uh, of the fact that uh, our vector D has at each node three scalar degrees of freedom there is one little detail about the construction of M which I'm going to show you right now, okay? Um, so let me just say here that we're going to look at one little thing to do with the form of M for this problem, okay? And in order to understand that, what we need to do is consider the uh, element integral corresponding to that term. Okay, so we consider integral over omega W H I rho second time derivative of U I, U I H, sorry, there should be an H there and an H here also, D V, okay? We recall that, of course, this is simply a sum over the elements 
integral over omega e w h i rho second time derivative of right remember this okay so okay, we're going to work with just that element integral to to clarify things 